Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain how to use the PID Tuner application in MATLAB. The PID Tuner application automatically tunes the gains of a proportional integral derivative or briefly PID controller for a single input, single output plant or single input, single output dynamics. Tuning process can be performed on the basis of desired closed loop behavior that can be specified in the time or frequency domains. By using the PID tuner, you can also select PID controllers with filter derivative terms or two degrees of freedom PID controllers, which are very powerful. In fact, two degrees of freedom PID controllers often more flexibility to balance a trade-off between disturbance rejection and reference tracking. But before we start with explanations, here is one very important warning. Namely, people often underestimate the complexity of PID controller tuning or in general they think that it's completely unnecessary to study control engineering methods beyond the classical PID control methods. PID Tuner app as well as MATLAB assume that models are linear and that there are no nonlinear elements. In reality, most of systems are nonlinear. Furthermore, MATLAB simulations often do not take into account noise, disturbances, quantization, implementation issues, model uncertainties, etc. Furthermore, the PID tuner does not take into account the physical limitations of actuators or other actuator nonlinear effects. Consequently, it might happen that your PID controller behaves perfectly in MATLAB simulations. However, when applied to a real system, its performance might be poor or the closed loop system might become unstable. That is the main reason why people do PhD in control engineering and control theory or spend decades researching, implementing and perfecting the knowledge of control engineering methods. Consequently, whenever you want to tune PID controller, try to do research. Don't blindly use MATLAB, but instead download papers, read books, and then once you understand the complexity of PID tuning methods, you can easily use MATLAB application and then you can estimate what is accurate in your MATLAB simulation and what is not accurate. Okay, let's immediately start. First of all, let's create a new script by clicking here. Then let's define our plant or our dynamics. Over here to save time, I will simply paste the code that I wrote. First of all, over here, I define S as a simple transfer function. And after that, I can use S to define my plant denoted by P symbolically. So let's select this and press F9 and let's see what happens. Okay, here I made an error since I need to select everything and let's do this and voila, here's our transfer function. Okay, the first step is to investigate the step response of your transfer function. Consequently, type step over here and put your transfer function inside of the parameters and press F9 and let's wait for a while to see our step response. So here it is. Let's wait and let's do this. Here it is, beautiful. So several things can be observed about this step response. First of all, we can see that the DC gain of this plant is relatively small. It is equal to zero point, around 0 0.035. Consequently, the controller will have to shift the gain all the way up. Okay, the next step is to start the PID tuner. To start the PID tuner, simply type PID with capital T tuner or PID tuner. And let's select this and press F9. And let's see. Now the PID tuner will open. And let's move it over here so that you can see everything. Here it is. Okay. First, let's explain all these settings of the PID tuner before we actually explain how to tune the response. First of all, notice over here what is written type and then you can see PI. If you click over here, you can see all the possibilities. 
First of all, we have one degrees of freedom controllers and we have two degrees of freedom controllers as well as two degrees of freedom PAD controllers with fix B and C. Okay, now I will make a small digression and I will explain what are one degree of freedom PAD controllers and what are two degrees of freedom PAD controllers. Let's start with one degree of freedom PAD controllers. Namely, if you click here, you will see PI, PI. Okay, so let's look into the structure. The structure is given over here. Here you can see P, this is exactly proportional. Then you see I, which is an integral or KI over S. And PI is the proportional integral, which has the standard form. Then over here, you can see PD, proportional and derivative. Then you can see PDF. So let me show you PDF again in the tuner. Here it is. And where is the structure? The structure is shown over here, PDF. This is the proportional and derivative first order filter on derivative terms. Similarly, you will have PIDF, which is proportional integral and derivative with first order filter on derivative terms. Why do you have a first order filter on the derivative term? Namely, it's not a good idea to implement a pure derivative action since the pure derivative action will amplify the high frequency components of your noise. Consequently, you always add the first order filter. Okay, now that we understand one degree of freedom PAD controllers, let's start with two degrees of freedom PAD controllers. Two degrees of freedom PAD controllers offer you more flexibility and more power when designing controllers. Namely, you can have more freedom and more flexibility when making a trade-off between the set point tracking and disturbance rejection. And you can see here the basic structures. If you now go back to the tuner, you will see over here PI2, PD2, PID2, PDF2 and PIDF2. And that's precisely what's shown over here. You can see PI2, PD2, PDF2, PID2 and PIDF2. And you can see over here the structure. Don't look at this column since this column is in the discrete time domain. You can see how the controllers look. You have additional degrees of freedom over here. Since you have weights on both the proportional gain and the weights over here on their derivative gains, when you take into account the reference point. That is, you have set point weighting over here. And over here, you can see two structures or the transfer functions and transfer function block diagrams of two degrees of freedom. Namely, you can reduce some of these structures to this form or to this form, and this is how they can be implemented in practice. Okay, now that we understand this very important concept, let's now continue and let's explain other menus of our PID tuner. Over here you have two forms. You have the parallel form and you have the standard form. I like to work with the parallel form. However, you can also switch to the, for example, to the other one, to the standard form. Next, over here you have options. If you click on options, this menu will pop up. Here in the design, you can select balanced reference tracking or input disturbance rejection. Balanced means that you want to balance a trade-off between the reference tracking and input disturbance rejection. If you know that you don't have, for example, input disturbances, you can select reference tracking. On the other hand, if you want to reject input disturbances, you can click over here. Let's keep this menu. That is, let's keep the focus on balanced. Next, over here, you can select the tuning domain. You have two options. You have the time domain and the frequency domain. Time domain means that you want to specify the desired closed loop behavior in the time domain. That is by using the time domain specifications that are shown over here. Good. Now we can explain this graph. This graph represents the closed loop response of your control system. That is, this graph is generated by selecting PAD control parameters and by adding the PAD controller 
to the control or to the feedback loop. And as the result, you obtain this response. This response is obtained by using these desired specifications. For example, if we want to have a faster response time, we will slide this slider to the right. And let's see what happens. You can see the response is faster. However, what happens, we have a huge overshoot, which is not a good phenomenon and, and it's not desirable to have such a huge overshoot. Then let's go back and let's, for example, keep the response time like this and let's see what this other slider will do with our response. If you move this slider, you can see how the response becomes more aggressive if you move the slider to the right or it becomes more robust if you move the slider more to the right. And here it is. You can always reset the design by pressing over here and you will obtain this initial value that's computed by MATLAB and the initial response. Okay, next. When tuning the PAD controller, you also need to look into another graph. That is, you often want to ensure that your PAD controller is able to reject the disturbances. To show the disturbance graph, click on Add Plot and click over here on Input Disturbance Rejection and you will get this graph. Now, you can actually show the, the two graphs at the same time and let me explain you how to do that. To show the two graphs next to each other, let's first move this, then click here, then click on Tile All and click on Left, Right. And here they are. Okay, let us now observe how our reference tracking and input disturbance rejection, rejection graphs will change after we change or after we move these two sliders. Let's see. Let's see what happens if we want to have a faster response. Aha, uh -huh. look what happened. Faster response, however, something changed with the disturbance here. Did the disturbance amplitude change? Well, let's see, by resetting this, it did. You can see the peak over here. And if you go faster, you can see that the peak value is actually decreased. However, is the response of the disturbance change? Well, it didn't. In fact, by increasing this, we have a better attenuation, at least initially, of disturbances. However, over here you can see that our reference tracking is degraded. Okay, so let's return everything to the initial value and let's see how the transient behavior changes the disturbance. You can see what happens. Very interesting. And here it is. Okay, let's reset everything and let's return everything to the initial values. Good. Next, let's switch to the frequency domain. Click here and click on frequency. And over here you can see that the sliders have changed. The first slider now shows the bandwidth and the second slider shows the phase margin. If you increase the bandwidth, you should expect to get a faster response. And let's make sure that this is the case. Yes, it is. And you can see what happens. The response is much faster. However, the response becomes more oscillatory. Let's now return or reset the parameters back. And let's see what the phase margin is doing. Namely, according to theory, phase margin is directly related to the damping ratio. Higher the phase margin, higher the damping ratio. That is, for high phase margins, the oscillations are completely damped. So let's see what happens when the phase margin changes. If I decrease the phase margin over here, you can see that the oscillations are happening. However, here, if I increase the phase margin, you can see that the oscillations are more smoother. In fact, for some reason over here, you cannot see the complete graph. So let me now try to change this to see, can I, 
can I make this graph to be more to zoom out? Yes. And let's now try to change the phase margin. Unfortunately, it doesn't zoom out as it should do for some reason. Anyway, so, but you can see already from the right graph what a phase margin will do. Small phase margin means oscillatory behavior for the reference and oscillatory behavior for disturbance rejection. So let's now close this. Let's now reset everything, return to the initial values, and let's keep it as it is. Okay, so this was the frequency domain tuning. Usually people advise that the phase margin should be 30 to 60 degrees. However, the bandwidth is kind of tricky to tune. You don't want to have your bandwidth to be too high, since if the bandwidth is too high, then you might excite the higher order modes of your dynamics. And higher order modes are usually not properly modeled. And in addition to this, you might get resonances, which might decrease the stability of your system. So be careful with the bandwidth. Yes, higher bandwidth means faster response. However, higher bandwidth means probably that you can excite the resonance frequencies and in addition, higher bandwidth means more control input. The next graph that we need to use when tuning the controller is the actual control input. That is the output of our controller. Let us for the time being close this graph and let's click here, add plot and show controller effort. The controller effort is actually the output of your control algorithm. And that's another graph that you need to take into account when tuning the PID controller. So let's show both graphs and let's see what happens. Let's go back to time and let's see what happens. If we want to have more aggressive behavior, you can see how the control input changes. If you want to have faster response time, you can see how the control input exploded. It became super large over here. And in practice, the control input is usually limited. Namely, your actuators have physical limitations and you cannot produce control inputs of arbitrarily large amplitude, such as the one over here. Consequently, when tuning PID controllers, you have to make sure that the control input is not too large. Consequently, let's keep it as it is. Let's keep the default values and let's continue further. The next step is to export the PID control parameters to the MATLAB workspace. Let's learn how to do that. To export the PID controller transfer function or PID control parameters to MATLAB workspace, you need to click over here. First of all, click on this reverse triangle and then click on export. And over here, you need to select what you want to export. We want to export the PID controller. And over here, you can enter the name of the transfer function of the controller. Let's keep it as it is. That is, let's keep it as C and click on export. Next, let's go back to the MATLAB workspace. And now in the command window, you can type who's. And beside S, our plant, you can see the controller. And type C and you can see the PI controller over here. And that's precisely the PI controller that's being tuned by using the PID tuner. Okay, let's now verify that PID controller is properly tuned. What I will do, I will con construct the closed loop transfer function. There are several ways to do that. First of all, we can use the feedback function. So I will call it WSL CL1. This will be the transfer function of the closed loop system. And then I will call the feedback function and I will specify C or better to say P multiplying C and with the feedback we only have one and this is a negative feedback. Okay, so let's do that and let's see our closed loop transfer function. Here it is and let's do a simple step of our closed loop transfer function. Here it is and let's select this and evaluate this 
and voila, here it is. You can see that this graph is exactly the graph that you can see over here. However, you cannot see the other part of the graph. Okay, so that's the first way. The second approach is to manually construct the closed loop transfer function. I will call the manually constructed as WCL2, and then I will simply type P multiplying C over 1 plus P multiplying C. Namely, I'm using the standard formula for computing the closed loop transfer function if I know the transfer function of the plant and the transfer function of the controller. Okay, now after you do this, it's very important that you use the mean real function. The mean real function will cancel all the poles and zeros that can be cancelled and it will create the minimal realization of your transfer function. Consequently, you need to type mean real WCL2 and store it in WCL2. And let's see over here. Oops, I didn't evaluate everything. And here it is. Let's see WCL1. And over here, you can see that these two transfer functions have the same parameters, which is very nice. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.